But uh, now we're going to go on to some videos. I have here um, some different segments that I've cut out. I'm not going to be playing the whole videos because we're talking really, really long ones here. But uh, two sermons I have, Jack Hiles, and these are later sermons. See, I could have gone back and looked at some of his early stuff, but I wanted to show sermons that were preached shortly before he died. First you have Jack Hiles, Can I Change Seats? Then you have Jack Hiles, Running the Race Before You. And then we're going to look at some things from his 70th birthday party and uh, then the, another video called Birthday 2011. Um, Jack Hiles, A Church with a Heart, a thing that they actually put out themselves about the First Baptist cult there in Hammond. And then the Jack Hiles Friday Memorial and Jack Hiles National Bus Kids Conference in Chicago, 1993. So those are the videos that we're going to actually be looking at here coming up. And just going to be looking at some little clips. And it's going to be, some of it's going to be intermixed and stuff, but I'm going to play them and then make comments. So here we go. And these 70 and 75 year old women are looking mighty good to me. So he starts out and he says, these 70 and 75 year old women are starting to look pretty good to me. Um, the Bible calls that coarse jesting. I mean, show me some place where any of the apostles, any of the Christians here in the New Testament are making jokes about good looking women. Now, if Jack, if Jack Hiles was not some kind of a pervert and he was true to, I've only ever known one woman in my entire life. You know, like he said in the interview, if that's true, why make these lewd references? I mean, go back over the years of me preaching. Show me one time when I ever made references to looking at good-looking women and stuff like this. And Snyder marks are like, oh, looking at some good, you know, real good-looking women. Why would I do that to my wife? I love my wife. I would never be talking about, oh, look at the good-looking women over there. The Bible says if you're looking and lusting on women, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. So even so, right there, by his own admission, he just admitted to being an adulterer in heart. But let's continue. And, you know, and, and, and watch, watch the, you know, he starts out with the jokes and he gets the crowd to like him and he, and he breaks the ice. And it's just public speaking, you know, professional public speaking personality. This isn't the Holy Spirit. Watch this. We're not dead yet. We still go to Lover's Lane every week. We take a nap out there when we go. Let me say to the heretic who preceded me, just because there's snow on the roof don't mean the fire's out in the furnace. Just because there's snow on the roof doesn't mean the fire's out in the furnace. Now, these are the statements that a Christian man would make. And you hear people in a crowd go, you know, going, Amen! Amen! Huh? This is Bible preaching? Let's continue. I don't get you hurt that bitch. <laughs> Let me say it again. I said, I fly so much that I'm a premier executive. I knew you'd be impressed. And thank you for recognizing the greatness when you hear it. Okay, so there he's bragging about being a premier executive, you know, when he's flying and things. And you say, well, he's joking. It's just, it's just he's joking with people and stuff like this. But again, what is this? Is this Bible preaching? Or is this a guy working the crowd? Now watch this one here. And here he actually makes a, a slam about women that are overweight. Again, watch this. What I do is I save those, those upgrade certificates usually for a full flight, especially if I'm sitting back in the back between two fat women. <laughs> Again, why do you need to make a joke about women being overweight? You know, I use the first class tickets in case I'm sitting between two fat women. The Holy Spirit would be speaking through a man to say that, huh? 
All right, let's continue. And walk up the aisle and sit in the first class because I am a premier executive. I guess you didn't get that, did you? Because I am a premier executive. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever think that you would hear and be in the same room with a premier executive? I, I know that. I know how you feel about that. And I, I certainly understand and I congratulate you because of the company that you're keeping tonight. You go from 73 to 74, then 74 to 75, for all the women are ugly. <laughs> you wait you get 73, boy, you'll be wishing it 75 year old. <laughs> they won't wish it you, but you wish it them. Again, you know, and people say, well, it's really not that bad. It's really not, you know, what big thing and stuff. But is this the way a Bible-believing preacher preaches? I mean, really? You know, this is the way a man of God would speak? We're talking about whistling at 75-year-old women and stuff? Whistling at any woman? Continue. Like this baptistry is here, except right back there in the middle, was this very attractive blonde. And uh, so I got to look at a pretty blonde while I was preaching. And look at those. Again, you know, here we have another sermon, and, uh, you know, he's talking about another pretty woman that he's looking at. Now, keep in mind, this is not in his youth. This is not in his days when he was a young man and, and whatever else. This is when he's old, just around the time that he was going to die soon. And he's still going off about good-looking women and, and whistling at women and things and making sexual innuendos and stuff. Now, if the guy was not a pervert, why would he be talking like this in his sermons? And these are just two sermons, too, brother. Uh, by the way, I mean, I could have gone through lots of them and picked this stuff out. This is not the way a Bible believer preaches. Let's continue. Did you know that the Apostle Paul watched how much you put, put in the offering quite a while ago? I'm saying there's a great cloud of heavenly witnesses and they're watching us down here. How about that one? There's a great cloud of heavenly witnesses and they're watching us down here. Uh, that's not what the Bible teaches. Let's look this verse up here. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now this is something that Jack Hiles did a lot of. He talked about this great cloud of heavenly witnesses, and, and he included his mother in some of this stuff, and he would pray to his dead mother and all this other stuff. That's not what the verse is saying. The so great a cloud of witnesses is down here on the earth fellowship with brothers and sisters. In other words, what you're going through in your life, there are other Christians that are going through the same thing. It's not saying that the cloud of witnesses, that those saints are up there in the clouds looking down at you and saying, watching everything that you're doing. And Jack Hiles comes out and says this, it sounds like a charismatic preacher. You know, oh, the Apostle Paul saw what you put in the offering plate tonight. Okay. Now let's logically reason this thing out again. Okay. What's the logical thing to say there? First of all, do you think the Apostle Paul cares about what you put in the offering plate? No. Secondly, what if the Apostle Paul did care what you put in the offering plate? What's he going to do about it? Um, wouldn't it be more accurate to say, you know, the Lord saw what you put in the offering plate tonight? Why would you say Paul? Unless you were a closet Catholic that believed in saints, demigods, you know, or lowercase g gods that live up there and they're the intermediaries between God and man. You know? And Jack Hiles admitted different, you know, things and stuff. You can, you can look this stuff up. He admitted to, to praying to his mother and asking her, you know, please intercede for me and, and all this stuff, you know. 
to his dead mother. Weird. But let's continue with the video clips here. Well, you throw a party for somebody you love, you invite their friends. And uh, since this is a Hiles Anderson College party, we're inviting one of the best friends our college has ever had from back in the coal mines of Kentucky. We brought the man who probably, aside from Brother Hiles, is most responsible for this college being in existence. I want you to meet Dr. Russell Anderson. Stop again. What's with all the cheering? You know? Okay, a round of applause or something like that, and then sit down and shut up. You know, it's this man worship stuff. They're going to see why they worship him here in a minute. Let's continue. I, th I thought this was a Baptist group. I think it's Pentecostal. What a great honor it is for me to be here today and to be with my buddy, my preacher, my friend, Dr. Jack Howes. I counted it a great honor when Dr. Scott called me and asked me if I would come. And if I could get away from my business, I said, nothing's more important than that. I'll be there. And Dr. Malone, that was a great message. I don't know if he's left yet or not, but I needed that, and I'm, I'm sure God will use that message today. It's already announced I'm an ex-coal miner. I left Kentucky in 1955 and came to Michigan. And then I got, I heard the gospel when I was 28 years old, never had been told I'd be saved. In 1959, I got saved. September 13th, 1959, and a few weeks after that, my pastor invited me to go to Tom Malone's church, Dr. Malone's church, and hear, and a Bible conference. Been a new Christian, six to seven weeks old in the Lord. I'd already seen 10, 11 of my, my family saved, including my mother. And so who was speaking there but Dr. Jack Howells and Dr. John R. Rice. And then when I heard Dr. Uh, Jack Howell speak and Dr. John R. Rice, I began to follow him around in the Detroit metropolitan area and hear him. And then I began to come back to our church and I said, let's get those men at our church. And I'll tell how many converts and how many people is baptizing. And I'll tell you something you don't believe. Some of them criticized them. They didn't like them. And so, but when I compared what they were doing with what Dr. Howell's and the results, how God was blessing his ministry... So I chose to follow Dr. Jack Howes. I chose to follow Dr. Jack Howes. Oh, really? Because I've seen the results of it. You know, I, I saw the results. So therefore, I chose to follow him. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, like Jack Hiles, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Interesting that uh, Russell Anderson said, you know, well, there, there were uh, people at my church that didn't agree with Dr. Hiles and Dr. John R. Rice, you know, and things. Yeah, because they had enough sense to see false salvation when they saw it. Easy believism. 
But I saw the results. I saw that they're getting a lot more people. So, you know, I went with them. I followed Jack Hiles. I followed Jesus Christ. Hmm. But listen to what he says coming up here. This is very telling. And then I began to write Dr. Jack Hiles. He was so mean in the pulpit. I was afraid to introduce myself to him. When I see him, and finally, I got the nerve one time at Bill Rice Ranch. And so, uh, Mrs. Hiles was with him then, and we went out, and I introduced myself. I had my wife, and so we went out to dinner and, and, and went to fellowshipping. And then I came to the pastor school. Now, remember, I'm a coal miner. I've never, I've, I've had very little formal training. And it scares me when I get around educated people like you all. And so, and so then came to pastor school, and then in pastor school, as a young businessman, I found out some principles that Dr. Jack Hiles was using at First Baptist Church to make it grow, and I said, I should apply a lot of those to my business. And I did, and built the largest drywall business in Ypsilanti, then became the largest building supply distributor, and then from there to apartments, and then uh, many, many more investors became a builder. I often tell Dr. Jack Howes, you know, when I'm around him, he and other great educators and the, and the faculty here, I don't know many of those big $2 words like Dr. Malone used. I don't, uh, are your instructors are used. Now, I know a lot of two-syllable words. Now, you take the two-syllable word dry wall. I know that. You see, I had 80 men working in that. And then you take the... the uh, Two syllable word part mints. I own over 400 of them. I, I know that. And then you take truck ing. I own a trucking company. So I, I, I two syllable words. And then I came, I came across that two syllable word money. I like that, you know. And then I came across those three syllable words because I said, I'm going to have to better my education if I run around Dr. Jack Howes. It's the three syllables. And I liked it. I got a check one day that says dividends. So there are three syllable words. And so. Boy, isn't that funny? You know, supposing that God is, godliness, or gain is godliness from such withdrawal thyself. And then it goes on to say, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10. Get this one memorized, brethren. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some uh, coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, old Russell Anderson here wrote a letter because he was all upset when Jack Hiles, or uh, Jack Scapp, rather, was departing from the King James Bible. I'm going to show you the letter here. Dr. Russell Anderson, you can get this thing online. It's, it's available. Um, he says here to Dr. Jack Scapp, Jack Hiles, students, graduates, at fac and faculty of Hack there. Um, he says about, you know, they started the thing under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you know, the Hiles Anderson College. I don't think so. And it talks about they started the fastest growing churches. With this teaching and preaching, he built and left behind $70 million worth of buildings and property. Okay. Interesting. Jack Hiles left behind $70 million in buildings and property, spoken by his partner there at uh, Hiles Anderson College. Very interesting. And it's interesting, too, because Adolf Hitler talked about, it's in the book um, uh, by Edmund Paris about the Jesuits. I can't think of the title right now, but it, it says in there that Adolf Hitler based much of his governmental organization after the Jesuit order. And I thought it was rather interesting that, that Russell Anderson, that clip we just watched, he said about how he watched how Jack Hiles was building his church, you know, his whole ministry there. And he said, I'm going to apply that to my business. And all of a sudden, he's making all kinds of money. Hmm. Coincidence, I'm sure. But look at this part of the letter. It says, I would like to share what the Holy Spirit is doing through my life. This is the Holy Spirit, by the way. It's doing this. Number one, as of December 31st, 2008, 10,300,000 people have been saved, mostly through the works of Hiles Anderson 
college graduates Dr. Rick Martin in the Philippines and Dr. Kevin Wayne in Mexico City. Each week I receive a fax from these men showing the results from the daily personal soul winners that I support financially at approximately $500,000 per year. Nice. I've helped build 10 Bible colleges. I have helped build 900 churches. I have given over $35 million. Then he says, I've never read, known or uh, read of two men that God has used to bring more souls to Christ. Okay. 10.3 million souls that were saved by these two men. And the other graduates of, of Hiles Anderson cult. What are their names? What are the names of these people that have been saved? Where's the fruit of 10.3 million people being saved since 1972? Has the world gotten better or worse? Well, I mean, if there's 10.3 million people saved just from one system out there, the Hiles Anderson cult system, where's the fruit that it would have produced? I mean, you have, you know, just a few thousand people being saved there in the day of Pentecost. I'll show you the verse. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued, continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. I wonder, I wonder how many uh, of these 10.3 million people have continued in the faith that they prayed the little prayer to get into. Oh, and you, by the way, you go on to read the book of Acts there. Those people turn the world upside down. Hmm. 3,000 people, and yet they change the world, those people. You know? And yet you have uh, 10.3 million people, according to Russell Anderson here, 10.3 million people saved. Where's the spiritual fruit? Because if they're truly saved, then they're all ministers of the gospel. They should be going out and witnessing and preaching and having a changed life. Like the people there in the book of Acts. It's all a lie. Every single bit of this Russell, Anderson, Jack Kyle stuff, it's all a lie. It's all, it's all a big money-making scam. $35 million. I mean... And he's given $500,000. I support financially at approximately $500,000 per year. Who needs that kind of money? I'm a soul winner. Give me $500,000 a year. Huh? And he's a, uh, I've given over $35 million. You know, and this is all the stuff that the Holy Spirit had Russell Anderson do here too, you know. But uh, look, look what Russell Anderson says here. According to this scripture, Hebrews 12, 1, which we read earlier, according to this scripture, I believe that Dr. Hiles knows what we are doing here on earth. He's a saint now, you see. He's up in heaven. The saint, Holy Father Hiles. No, he's not up there. He's down there. So, Dr. Hiles, I would like to speak to you. He's speaking to the dead Dr. Hiles. You know? Uh, you know, when he talking about here, the foundation of Hiles Anderson cult, it says, which I gave over $12 million to. Let's see. Uh, and here in the last part of it, he says, Dr. Hiles, I am one of your followers. And you know, this was a recent, fairly recent thing. This is after that thing we're just watching here. Sure. But let's continue watching this. Then, but anyway, following with Dr. Jack Hiles, and I can remember one time I came to see him for advice. I said, I'm thinking about quitting the business world. I said, I'd like to be the second man or over soul winning or begin to win souls. And I said, I'd like to do that. And he said this, and I've used it many times with a lot of businessmen. He said, Russ, God needs some businessmen who will live a separate life, who will win souls, 
and I advise you stay in the business world. Well, there's some scriptural advice, isn't it? You know, I, I think I'm going to quit the business world and go into ministry full time. Russ, God needs lots of wealthy, rich businessmen. Don't go out and win souls full time. No, 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 no. You stay in the business world and you so you can give five hundred thousand dollars a year to men that win souls and thirty five million dollars to Christian endeavors and continue. And I followed his advice, needless to say, which I think was correct because I put literally millions in God's work by following his advice where I would not have done. I don't think if I had, have gone, uh, had to resign the business world. But in, again, as I begin to travel and study and hear, I've heard, I bet 95% of all messages he's preached. And ever since I've met him. And the only reason why I haven't heard the other 5% is because he hasn't sent them to me. And so I'd hear those. And so, but being able to travel with him, I wish everyone could know him personally like I do. I've heard him hold up his hands and say, Millions has passed through this hands. By the way, he'd be a multimillionaire today if he kept the royalties on his books. He gives it away. <laughs> he'd be a millionaire today if he kept the royalties on his books. Yeah, old Jack Howells wasn't a millionaire. You know, oh no, no. He just left behind $70 million worth of real estate. But he wasn't a millionaire. You know, and, and he owned his children's homes and he bought things and, and he's bought, you know, all this real estate and everything in the area and he's you know, fornicating with his deacon's wife and he's building her a house and just paying for things and whatever else. There was one of these reports here, you know, and I can't verify it, so that's why I didn't, you know, go to the thing. But one of the reports was that he spent in one night $17,000 with one of these things that he, little things he does, you know, where the girls come and they sing, We Love You Preacher, and he's giving them all this money and stuff. Disgusting. But uh, watch what Russell Anderson says here. Check this out. He said he'd hold his hand and said, millions has passed through these hands. And not any of them ever stuck to my fingers. Now, I can't say that. He's a better Christian than I am. Some of mine is stuck. See? <laughs> and so... The, are these students brain dead? Oh, no. A lot of them are lost. And the fact is, you know... He's like, uh, some of the money's stuck, see? You know, he's holding up his gold rings. See, look at that. I, I'm, I'm a rich man, huh? see? So, you know, millions, millions have stuck to my hands. I, I'm wealthy. He's a better Christian than me. And they're, woo, yeah, amen, hoo, 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 woo. Let's continue. If I, I'd like for you students to ask your instructors, teachers, professors, whatever you call them, which was right. A teacher would give me an F one time in school. She asked me, she said, Russ, if 10 flies lighted on your back and you mashed one of them, how many would be left? I said, one. See, the other nine would have flown away when I mashed the one. And she flunked me. She said, there'd be nine left. So you find out what your instructors would say. I had the privilege of one time going to Japan with Dr. Jack Howes. I like to tell the human part of him. I like to tell the human part of him? What's the other part? Oh, that's right, he's a god. I forgot. The head of a cult, you know, they're, they attain, attain, you know, godhood. I like to tell the human part. Yeah, continue. And so we were flying back and coming in a little higher to land. And couldn't get the landing gear down. Right behind the pilot, the co-pilot came out and people were scared and, and uh, we were going to have to crash land. They let the fuel out of the plane. And so they tore up the floor right behind the cockpit to go down and manually do something. They, they never told us they got it fixed. I don't think they knew they did because when we came in to land, there's fire trucks following us in. But just before we was coming in to land, Dr. Howell looked over me, he said, you know, Apostle Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. But he didn't have four kids to raise. <laughs> he says he don't remember saying that. He did. He sure did. And so, and then to think that Dr. Jack Howells 
put my name, the second or the third, one of the most important things in my life ever happened to me, and let me share his name with this college. Greatest honor I've ever, ever received. Don't understand it, but I like it, though. And so, but I told him, I said, you know, I didn't go very far in school, but then when they taught me the ABCs, A becomes before H. You see what I mean? <laughs> is, that, is that the way they taught you? A comes before H, right? I don't know why it wasn't Anderson Howes, but anyway, I'll accept second best. Thank you very much. Okay, let me pause it real quick here again. You know, funny joke there, you know, I don't know why I came in second and stuff. Well, because you're not, you haven't attained godhood there, Russell. But uh, listen to what the student says, or whatever this young guy is here. Listen to what he says. You know, if you think that, that Hiles wasn't running a cult, listen to what he says. Please be seated. With the Rand Anderson around here, if Brother Hiles says H becomes, comes before A, we believe it. And uh, that's, that's law. And uh, thank you for coming, Dr. Anderson. Uh, around here, if Dr. Hiles says that H comes before A, we believe it. That's the law. Uh, that's a definition of a cult. Okay, here we have, as part of this birthday thing, they do this funny thing. One of the students comes out dressed like Elvis and acting like Elvis. And... You know, whatever. Okay, fine. You know, ha ha ha, boy, funny. But then they play a hymn, and the guy intentionally sings it blasphemously, and it's laughed at. I don't think it's funny. There are certain things that are sacred and holy, and you don't make fun of them, and you don't mock them. And Jack Hiles would do this too, by the way, when he'd have his girls' nights where he would talk to, you know, these girls, the young college girls, and he'd bring them in and all this other stuff. He'd have them sing songs about him you know with uh see if i can find that he'd sing have him sing songs about himself about jack hiles to the tune of different hymns gospel hymns which to me is is blasphemy i forgot to look that one up here let me just see if i can find it real quickly okay found the quote here it says um Page 49, down here, uh, he says, Have you heard about those meetings Jack Hiles had with the college girls on Thursday nights? Unbelievable, but true. He wrote little ditties for us to sing to him like, Look at all that hair, look at all that hair. It's the answer to a college maiden's prayer. It's no joke that I'm provoked, but I'm not allowed to stroke those bushy locks of Boopsy Whoopsie's hair. You can read the rest there. But over here... Hiles also taught the co-eds the following song, which they sang to the tune of Come and Dine. Where's the beef? The woman calleth. Where's the beef? As they gauge, gaze at bulging biceps of the chief. There they drool with envy green, while they, with jealousy they dream, wishing they could find a guy with equal beef. A pastor writes this and has young girls singing it to him. And you can see here are some pictures that they put out themselves showing this very thing. It's not fake. It's not some kind of a thing. Oh, you're just slanderous, whatever. I don't think so. But let's, let's see what they do here with this Elvis impersonator guy making fun of an old hymn. And I'm only going to be playing a little tiny bit of it, so don't get too sick. Here we go. Hit it, Johnny. It will be worth it all. All sorrows will erase when we see him. On tales of his divorce, all sorrow will erase. So greatly run the race till 
It's interesting because if Elvis actually put out an, a gospel album and he sang the hymns that way, Jack Hiles would have been up in arms and said, that's blasphemy. How dare he sing our hymns that way? And yet in his birthday party, it's fine. But let's continue. And then we have one more little present that Brother Scop is going to explain to you. Okay. One more little present that Brother Scott is going to explain. Now, listen to the reaction of the crowd here. Listen to this. And don't tell me, you know, oh, there's no such thing as man worship out there at Hack. Listen to this. When you have a birthday, you, you kind of give the smaller gifts first, but you have to have some big prize to give. And when it's a special birthday, like a 70th, you want to do something real special. Preacher, we've often heard how you have used the United Airlines red carpet room and how you like to use that. And in fact, you've taken a few of us there on different occasions and showed us how much you like it. We have a little space at the college here that's not being used, but we think in the appropriate way. The beautiful little porch out the end of the administrative hallway and the lounge that the faculty and staff use. We thought if we raised a little money, we could make that into a beautiful Jack Hiles red carpet room. Brother Clyde, if you'd come in this time, please. We had to raise a little money for this project. And uh, the college here, the student body sit sitting before you here, the staff and faculty administrators and a few friends around the country have pooled their resources in the last few days have raised seventy thousand dollars for your seventieth birthday <laughs> students Let me pause it again look at his look at his mouth look at Jack Howells's mouth look at that lust Ooh. I wonder who the uh, few friends were around the country and the students and a few friends could raise $70,000 in cash in a few days. And like you could see at the very beginning of the documentary, uh, we just barely pay the bills here at Hiles Anderson College. Let's continue. Those are three armed guards. Don't you try to touch that money. Uh, we have a wheelbarrow full of cash for you. Bring it right on up here. That is $70,000 of real cash. Let me tell you <clears throat> just a little bit of the idea we had that a place where VIPs visiting pastors, our visitors, our guests could come, a place where a pastor could make a phone call and use a little private desk, the phone call, the phone there, a place where visitors could come and get a beautiful view of the campus. And we just saw the entranceway here, a little artist rendition of the Jack Hiles Red Carpet Room. And we'd like to be, do that in your honor. And these students have sacrificed just a little bit just to say we love all our hearts, preacher. Thank you for being our preacher. Let me just 
just pause it there again. How do some of you out there feel about that? Some of you that have financial difficulties, some of you that are struggling, and they're taking $70,000 in cash to build a red carpet room. Boy, good stewards of the Lord's money there, aren't we? You know, I mean, it would be impressive to have $70,000 worth of Bibles. Impressive to see $70,000 worth of gospel tracts. $70,000 uh, for a new printing press to print gospel tracts. A red carpet room? Let's continue. You may be. You may be seated. Can I have this mic, please? Thank you. <clears throat> preacher, last year you celebrated 50 years in the ministry as an ordained preacher. And at that time I sent you a personal note. And I made mention of the fact that it was overwhelming to me the very thought of 50 years in the ministry. It was such a, a milestone to me that I was just caught up in it and I made mention to, it in a, to you in a note. Preacher, on your 70th birthday, you've talked a lot about three score and ten. We've been talking a lot around here, and we've been thinking a lot around here, about the fact that we feel you just started. We are going to be very jealous about you. We have decided that we're going to ask God to give you at least, as a bare minimum, at least 13 more years here. So you can have 50 years of ministry right here at First Baptist Church in Howells Anderson College. We'll pause it again. Oh, we want 13 more years. Oh, he died in four. <laughs> so much for their prayer request. But let's continue. This is the 25th year of Hiles Anderson College. Every week for the rest of this school year, one thing that's going to happen is there are going to be 25 students, 25 different students, every week, praying 50 minutes for you to have 50 years with us here. That's just part of what we plan to do this year in honor of your 70th birthday. The administrators of the college have a proclamation that we would like to read. And we're going to ask the student body and the faculty and staff to endorse the proclamation. I'll ask the other administrators to come at the appropriate time and help me with the proclamation. We, the people of Hiles Anderson College, in order to celebrate the birthday of our founder and chancellor, Dr. Jack Hiles, do ordain and establish this declaration that all men are not created equal. All men are not created equal? Let's continue. Our Dr. Hiles has been endowed with certain undisputable traits that among these are character, loyalty, and the pursuit of lost souls. That, that to, to establish, establish these, these traits, traits in the American, American young people, Hiles Anderson, Anderson College has been instituted by God through our founder and matchless leader, Dr. Jack Hiles. On this most auspicious day... Pause there for just a minute. Matchless leader? I can uh, find one that's a lot better than Jack Hiles. You know, Jesus Christ, uh, just maybe... We, the beneficiaries of his life of service, do dedicate ourselves to further strive to achieve this level of commitment to a life of selflessness 
and that, that we, we may, may do so under his watchful and caring leadership for many years to come. It is our heart's desire and our prayer that God would grant our Dr. Jack Hiles continued strength and wisdom and prosperity. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the power of our divine and most holy God, we mutually agree to the best of our ability to earnestly petition the mercy of our great God to grant the continuation of our preacher's ministry 13 years or more, offering 50 years of service at First Baptist Church and Hiles Anderson College. This, this is our intense desire. desire. I want everybody to stand. Do you wish to ratify this proclamation? We want 50! 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 50! 50! 50! 50! 50! 50! 50! 50! We want 50! I don't think God granted their request. Like I said, they were they're asking for 13 more years. Hiles is dead in four. I guess they didn't get their 50, did they? Well, the Hiles, why don't you come say a word to your student body? So what's the Hiles do? He comes up and he goes like this. Puts him up in the air like that. Now you see, understanding occult hand symbology, that can mean a couple of things. Okay, first of all, you say, well, it's a peace symbol, Brian. Well, the peace symbol, if you look at it, is actually an inverted cross that has the two arms broken down. That's what the thing is. It's a runic thing. It's, a, it's wicked. The peace symbol itself is wicked. But... Whenever you see two fingers up and three fingers down, it means the two horns of Satan above the Godhead, the Trinity. Okay, I'm going to do this symbol here real quickly, but that thing right there, you see it? Okay, two fingers up, three down. You see it again? You know? Now, of course, some, somebody's going to like probably cut that, you know, out and, not, and make me look like a Satanist or something, but... I just did it as a demonstration, okay? Whenever you see somebody putting two fingers up, three fingers down, it's also a satanic symbol of Satan above God, all right? Also, in the Illuminati, there is the law of fives, okay? The, the thing of, of um, it's, it gets pretty detailed. You can check out some Bill Schnedlin stuff on that. He talks about that. Uh, look it up, you know. But uh, why would a Christian minister be putting his hands up like that? You know, but now Jack Hiles has the opportunity to come out and answer some of this blatant idolatry that our pastor has been endowed with certain qualities that, that the average person just doesn't have. He has the opportunity now to come out and correct it and say, hey, this man worship has to stop. This is just wrong. Let's watch and see if he does that. And let's watch and see who he thanks for getting him to where he is today. Let's watch this. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Actually, I've come to announce my retirement today. <laughs> I decided not to use this money to build the room with. <laughs> I believe Ms. Howes and I can make better use of it than that. I, it's awfully hard to believe I'm 70 years old. Ms. Howes said, how did you feel this morning? I said, I felt like the sturdiest of looking at me on the plane saying, that old man ought not to be traveling by himself. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's eerie. It really is. It's, it's eerie. I owe so much to so many people. I've never claimed to be a self-made man because I'm not a self-made man. I owe debts to the one who bore me, sacrificed to rear me, owed debts to my sister, who fed me when I, nobody else in the family had any money. I owe a debt to the toughest woman I've ever met, who stuck with me for 51 years. I owe debt to Forrest McElroy, who baptized me, and J.C. Sizemore, who ordained me. I owe debt to my Sunday school teachers, who taught me. I owe debt to those who fed us as we were as a boy, brought us food, and I owe debt to Michael Harvey who influenced my life so much. I owe a debt to the simple people at the Morris Chapel Baptist Church out in the country who put up with my first sermons as a pastor. I owe a debt to the Grange Hall Baptist Church, the people who were my first love my first full-time church, where in this building over here, I saw my first convert walk the aisle. I saw baptized my first convert, had my first wedding, my first funeral. Everything first. I owe a debt to those people. Most of them are in heaven now. Not many of them are left. I owe a debt to the people whom I served for just a while at Southside Baptist Church, Henderson, Texas. I owe a debt to the people of the Miller Road Baptist Church of Garland, Texas, where I served and where I actually grew up in the ministry and where I got known nationally and where I, I uh, really grew up. I owe a debt I could never pay to the members of First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, who adjusted to me when I was a young preacher, so different from what they were accustomed to. I could not begin to, or not close this without saying I owe a debt to Dr. John Rice, my dear friend. So all those people he owes debts to, mother, sister, uncle, Sunday school teacher, guy led him to the Lord, the people there, the church members, he never thanked Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not a self-made man, and I've gotten here as a result of all these people. What about salvation? What about Jesus Christ? I mean, at 70 years old, don't you think that you could at least give the Lord some credit? Kind of strange, isn't it? Let's continue with the next clips. Do we God's word every day? And pray to God every day. Come to church! Your home should be a Christian home. All just the day, don't worry, get out in your home. Right? We love America! You brought America? You brought Jesus! We are living in the church! the Lord! I should not have freedom. God's word. Okay, 
Just wanted to put that little clip in there. This is from the uh, Church with a Heart, Jack Kyle's Church with a Heart, FBC of Hammond. Okay, you can look it up. They put that video out themselves, okay? And I thought that was kind of ironic. Here you have a Sunday school teacher who's putting on this charismatic yelling and shouting and stuff like this. Um, he's preaching to deaf people. Why do you have to yell when you preach to people that can't even hear you? Could it be because he's imitating his cult leader, Jack Hiles? And watch some of Jack Hiles' stuff. He'll yell and he screams and he knocks microphones over and he pushes pulpits and stuff around. Hmm. Interesting. You know? And you say, uh, well, uh, what's the connection there? Well, let me just show you another thing here. I found this very interesting. I showed this at the beginning of the video. The repentance blacklist thing, and you have Stephen Anderson, you know, and he has Jack Hiles' stuff up, you know. Stephen Anderson puts on his own little shows, and he imitates Jack Hiles. He's just another cult member. And you say, was there a connection? Well, here you have faithfulwordbaptist.org about our pastor. It talks about here, Pastor Stephen Anderson, born blah, blah, blah. Down here it says, Pastor Anderson started Faithful Word Baptist Church on December 25th, 2005. He holds no college degree, but has well over 140 chapters of the Bible memorized word for word. He holds, holds no college degree. Now, is that true? Yeah, partly. Let me show you another picture here. Here is his wife's blog, Stephen Anderson Family Blogspot.com. And here she says, My husband left Hiles Anderson College in November of 2005, just months short of graduating. So, wait, let me get this straight. Stephen Anderson was going to Hiles Anderson College, and a few months short of graduating, he goes and starts his church. But he has no college education. Well, he doesn't say that. He says, I have no college degree. So Anderson was part of that same mind control programming. And now he goes and he's doing the same thing with his congregation. Just like the deaf Sunday school teachers imitating Jack Hiles. Let's watch another clip from the video here. Watch the yelling again. something, you'd have an opportunity that a lot of people don't have, and if you don't take advantage of it, it's going to be too late. Seek the Lord while he may be found, while he is near, while you have the opportunity to learn and to get to know God, you need to do it now. Don't put it off. While you have a chance, don't put it off. Get a hold of God while you can now. Learn about God while you can now. Learn about salvation while you can now. Say, Brother Andrew, what's salvation? Salvation is trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior so someday you'll have an opportunity to... To go to heaven is what he says there. But, you know, yelling and screaming, you need to do it now! You gotta do it now! At little children. These dear little children sitting there, and, they're, and you can see it, and they're just like in their eyes, they're just, you know, like, ugh, you know, guys screaming at them. What do you think that they're going to do at the end of the, the uh, class there when he says, okay, who here wants to get saved? Do it now! Who do you think is going to say no to that? You see? And that guy can report back to his superiors, and again, this is from their own video, The Church with a Heart, you know. Another Sunday school teacher, this black man here, and he's, he's talking to these little children and stuff, forcing them into salvation. You better pray the prayer. You better do it now. And then he can say, I had 30 children saved in Sunday school this morning. See how satanic and wicked this thing is. And where are they getting this from? All from their cult leader, Jack Hiles, that puts on the same kind of performance. That's where Stephen Anderson got his mind control brainwashing techniques from. And the hypocrisy of Anderson. Well, I don't have any college degree. Although he went to Hiles Anderson and just about graduated there. 